Now that you know about the constant acceleration equations, it's time to take a look at a classic example of constant acceleration, the acceleration due to gravity. So here's a video of a ball falling. And by the way, this is just a piece of blue fabric that I hung up in my house, and one of my daughters is taking the video. You can kind of see that the ball is speeding up as it falls, and this is even more obvious when the movie is advanced frame by frame. Notice that the image of the ball smears out as it falls, and the smears get longer and longer as it approaches the ground, indicating that the ball's speed is increasing. When it bounces, you can see that it slows down as it comes up, and then speeds up again as it comes down. So how would you know whether the acceleration of the ball is constant? Well, as we've discussed in previous videos, if the plot of displacement versus time looks like a parabola, and the plot of velocity versus time looks like a straight line, that's going to be constant acceleration. I found a great app that will allow me to take a video and analyze the motion. The app is called Video Physics, and I'm going to show you that right now. I have a movie clip preloaded, and I cropped it so that it just includes the part where the ball is falling. The way it works is that you start the movie just as the motion starts. So in this case, I'll start the movie right where the ball is totally free from the hand and beginning to descend. Then these crosshairs can be moved to locate the position of the object. And each time you're satisfied with where you've placed the crosshairs, you just tap on the outer shaded part there, and the program adds a point for you. I'm going to go through that now, and I'll just speed up the movie a little bit like they do on cooking shows so it doesn't take too long. Once the dots are placed, I can click on Origin and Scale. This allows me to place the origin where I want it, and I can drag these circles over to indicate where one meter is on the sheet. I place those white dots on the sheet for just this purpose. Okay, once the points are selected and the scale is set, this plotting button will show us some plots. The first plot shows the x and y positions of the various data points. Now, the ball was dropped more or less straight down, but it drifted slightly to the left, and that drift is picked up in this plot. It looks like the ball went wildly to the left, but if you take a look at the x-axis, you can see that the entire thing is only a few millimeters, so this plot is really exaggerating that drift. The next plots are of position versus time in the x-direction, and velocity versus time in the x-direction, and these are again showing that the ball drifted slightly to the left. But what I really want to show you is the motion in the y direction, and that is what the next plots show. Check out that parabolic position versus time plot, and notice how velocity versus time looks pretty linear. It isn't perfect, but it's pretty good. If you drew a straight line through that data and found the slope, you'd be finding the acceleration. Notice that from a time of 0.4 seconds to 0.6 seconds will be a delta t of 0.2 seconds. And over that same time interval, the velocity changes by about minus 2 meters per second. Since acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, acceleration on that interval is around negative 10 meters per second squared. That's a very rough estimate, but it's pretty darn close to negative 9.81 meters per second squared, which is the accepted value for the acceleration due to gravity on Earth for an object that's not experiencing any air resistance. This object does experience some air resistance, but the effects are pretty small in this case. This example only deals with the motion when the ball is falling, so let's take a look at a clip where the ball is tossed up. I asked my daughter to help me with this clip, and it turns out to be incredibly difficult to toss the ball so that it really goes straight up. After a lot of tries, we managed this. It isn't perfect. You can see that the ball drifts slightly to the left, but this is about the best we could do. Let me put the points on again. Notice the beautifully parabolic plot of position versus time, and also notice that velocity versus time is a line that's more or less straight. This shows us that the acceleration is the same whether the object is going up or coming down, and very importantly, the acceleration of the object is not zero at the top of the path. The velocity is zero at the top of the path, but the slope of the velocity versus time plot is the same everywhere. You should think long and hard about the acceleration at the top of the path and make sure you understand why it's not zero. The other thing I want to mention is the story about Aristotle and Galileo and the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The history goes that Aristotle believed that heavier objects fall faster and lighter objects fall more slowly. And Galileo famously went to the Leaning Tower of Pisa and dropped two objects of different masses from the tower. Both hit the ground at the same time, proving Aristotle wrong. But in fact, lots of people hold Aristotle's view, and it's pretty easy to understand why. Just take a piece of paper and a book and drop them from the same height. 
you'll see that the book hits the ground first. What Aristotle did not account for is air resistance. The space around the book and the paper is not empty. It's filled with tiny particles that get in the way of objects as they fall, reducing their acceleration. These two objects have about the same surface area, but the book is much more massive, so the effects of air resistance are less noticeable for the book than they are for the sheet of paper. If you can remove air resistance in some way, like by putting objects in a huge vacuum, you'll find that they do all fall with the same acceleration. I don't have a big vacuum, but the show Mythbusters did a great segment where they dropped a hammer and a feather simultaneously in a huge vacuum, and they did land at the same time. You can Google that clip if you're interested, but here's a cool trick that eliminates the effects of air resistance without the fancy vacuum. Simply place the paper on top of the book and drop them again. The mass of the paper hasn't changed, but now the paper and the book fall together, hitting the ground at the same time. When the paper is on top of the book, it just goes along for the ride, so I guess you could say that the book is creating a vacuum for the paper as it falls. Another nice demonstration is to start with two flat pieces of paper that have the same weight. According to Aristotle, they should fall at the same rate. But what if one piece of paper is crumpled into a ball? The weight hasn't changed, but when the papers are dropped, the crumpled paper hits the ground first. In this case, gravity pulls down on both objects with the same force, but the paper with more surface area hits more particles as it falls and therefore experiences a bigger upward force due to air resistance. As a result, it has a smaller acceleration and hits the ground later. I tried this example out on an eight-year-old the other day, and they asserted that the paper must have gained mass when I crumpled it up, which just goes to show you that A, this topic can be really confusing for people, and B, it's always good to have a small scale at your disposal when discussing this topic. To conclude, the way physicists like to clear up this mess is to say that an object is in free fall if the only force acting on it is gravity. So an object in free fall has no air resistance acting on it. On Earth, objects in free fall accelerate at 9.81 meters per second squared down. And this particular acceleration comes up so often that we use the shorthand G to stand for 9.81 meters per second squared. Notice that sometimes down is defined to be negative, and in that case, the acceleration of an object in free fall on Earth would be negative 9.81 meters per second squared, or negative G. So that's kind of a long video just to tell you that objects in free fall on Earth all accelerate down at 9.81 meters per second squared. But this is such an important idea and there's really a lot of confusion surrounding it. Rather than just accepting all of this is true, I hope you'll take some time to think about objects in free fall and maybe even try to spread the word about how it all works. I guarantee that you'll have some interesting conversations if you do.